I met a subscriber named Seppo, henceforth known as T-Bone, because no one will be able to pronounce Seppo. We played Kailami Country Club, course rating 74.7, slope rating 133, ranked the 27th best course in South Africa, green fee $25. There is some background to this round. 1. I am changing my swing. I want to promote more of a David Duval head up movement. My old swing was killing my lower back because I was falling back onto my back leg instead of rotating my upper body through the shot. The David Duval movement means I will release my body and head earlier rather than letting it trail behind my lower body, thereby sinking it all up and removing the pain. I bought a new driver, the Strixen Z785, and this was my first ever round with it. I have new wedges and they have totally different feels. I left my Mizunos in Port Elizabeth and switched to Cleveland. I changed my gapping from 53, 56 and 60 degrees to 50, 54 and 58 degrees. I was actually filming my new buddy T-Bone, so I wasn't concentrating much on my shots and I took gimmies within two feet to speed things up. This year, the new theme for my channel is stress-free golf. Every shot and every thought in our games must become stress-free. I want you to only hit shots you know how to hit and forget the rest. Enjoy the game again and take control of your game. These first three shots you'll notice under even a little pressure to impress my man T-Bone. I go back to my old swing and hit at the ball instead of through it. We always revert to our old habits under pressure until we groove in a new habit. I short-sided myself. But of course, as the real Mr. Short Game, this ain't no thang but a chicken wang. I saved par here, purely because I can chip. What I should be doing on this par 3 is taking a club that will clear the water with ease and not go longer than the back edge. Essentially, I should play the back edge. There's so much green behind the pin. The reason for double bogey was poor thinking on the tee. It's always best to hit one more club to the back edge when hitting over a hazard. It was 97 degrees outside, so the iPhone overheated. I hit a 5-iron from 210 yards onto the back of the green for two shots. There was water short of the green, so I hit a club that would reach the back edge like I should have on the par 3. See? Learn your lessons as you go, instead of getting tense. Aggressive in terms of hitting it harder? Hitting it further on. Oh, okay. I prefer to hit it just on the front, so I'm hitting it like halfway there. Reason for the eagle? Good thinking on the second shot, and of course, <laughs> the chipping. This is where we have to be great to get to scratch. I was too stiff in my wrists worrying about the new swing, so I teed the shot. Inside my play box, we can't think about anything at all. I didn't commit to a plan in the think box, so I botched the shot. I had just finished filming T-Bone's deforestation. <laughs> I had just finished filming T-Bone's deforestation of this area, so I was in a serious rush here. I also took the wrong club, 
and should have hit a bump and run with a 50 degree along the dry land instead of a fluff lob wedge. Oh, I'm doing so badly. Reason for the double bogey? Not committing to a shot in a fairway after a great drive. Reason for birdie? Knowing my distances exactly and committing to the new swing. As I get better inside 100 yards, I back myself to get up and down in two shots and have more pars in tricky situations. Here, I had no shot at all and chipped back into the fairway. No, you gotta go, ball. Oh. You gotta go. Right. Perfect. Okay, maybe not. Reason for bogey? Poor tee shot because of the old swing due to lack of commitment. Should have hit the hybrid. The putt was also silly because I knew the line but changed my mind when I stood over the putt. Oopsie, hitting it too hard and at the ball. Swinging it smoother is what I should be thinking. On this hole, there was no reason to hit a driver. It's handicap stroke index 2. I wanted to get the driver right. I could probably hit a 3 iron and a 5 iron to this green. The landing area is extremely tight at 290 yard mark, where the ball would go with the driver. Reason for bogey? Bad tee shots due to a bad strategy, and bad planning with a bad club selection. I had an extremely awkward stance, so I clubbed up, one club, and expected less distance. Instead, I flushed it like hell, and it finished against the electric fence 25 yards past the pin. Ah, oh, lucky. Lucky shot. Downhill, downwind. There is always a chance of going over the back into the dead man's land. 
There is no recovering from overshooting the green here. A smart play here would be to play to the middle of the green, favoring the right side where there is an opening between the bunkers. Instead, shooter McGavin goes straight at the pin and tugs it a little. Reason for double bogey? Defective thinking off the tee. Rather use one less and try a walk off here with a par. Over this one. Let's see how it goes. I wanted a draw here, and instead of just trusting the swing, I went hard at it again, like the first two holes, and pushed it. My flop shot is not my best shot at the moment. I should have just bump and run it up there. I seem to like to play shots I don't have full trust in and that messes up scoring. Reason for the bogey? Poor thinking on the tee shot and lack of trust in the swing. I don't need to hit it hard, just straight. When we talk about a good short game, we're really just talking about imagination. And imagination is assessing the conditions and using the best shot for the condition. There are many ways to play this shot. You could hit a flopper, but then I could tee it into the water. I assessed the lie and it wasn't great with a small clamp of grass between the ball. I decided to bump it onto the slope in front of me and let it run off the downslope through the fluffy and dry grass, gaining momentum to run out to the hole. To me, this was the lowest risk, and even an under-hit chip would run out because of the slope in front of me. Final hole, and I can attack it in two. I set up my fade shot to ride the slope of the bottom of the valley. Luckily I hit the tree, and T-Bone recommended I buy a lottery tickets that night. I did. I didn't win. With chipping, it's all about confidence. We get confidence from practice. I practice chipping by focusing on hitting a spot. I practice reading the green like a putt and seeing how my chips react to the greens and the slopes. For me, the hole is irrelevant. The spot I want to land it on is the key and the only focus. I get this spot through reading greens like a putt. I envision the ball landing and taking the break like a putt would. I hit it closer to the hole or with a lower lofted club when it's uphill and I hit it closer to me or with more loft on downhill chips. I will elaborate more on chips later this year. Overall, a good round, although a little rushed and careless. Next up, we see T-Bone's round and where he could tighten up on his game and how if people listened to me, they would break their scoring barriers.